Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers. This is Biblical Insights. In this video, we're going to be talking about the idea of relationship, that God created us in his image so that he and we could enjoy a mutually satisfying relationship. We find that idea, at least the beginning of that idea, in the very first chapter of the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Old Testament. And so we're going to get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to ask you to help us out a little bit and uh, uh, subscribe to this channel. There's a little button down there below. If you subscribe, uh, it would help our, our channel quite a bit. Does it cost anything? Nobody's going to bother you. Uh, it, it just tells YouTube that you like the content here and uh, it moves our uh, video up through their algorithm so more people have a chance to, to see it. You might also hit the little like button or maybe the, the thumbs up button on, on your screen. Uh, that would be very helpful, so we would appreciate that. Okay, what about this idea that God created human beings in his image? What does that mean exactly? Well, let's read a couple of verses from Genesis 1. We're going to read verses 26 and 27 and see what it says. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. What does that mean exactly? Well, it... it, it it refers to the image and likeness of God. Now, those are two different Hebrew words, um, but they mean essentially the same thing. Both, both of the words suggest the idea of uh, resemblance. God was saying, let's make man so that he's basically like us. And of course, when he said man, he didn't mean males versus females. He meant man as in mankind, human beings, people. Okay. Let's create people so that uh, they are like us. Now, who, who was he talking with when he said this? Was, was there somebody else there? Some people suggest that this is a reference to uh, the Trinity, to God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Spirit. And that may be the case. Um, I think you, you have to be careful with that. You don't want to end up thinking there's three gods somehow. I, there's just one God. I, I think it's better to think in, in terms of God uh, using something like the royal we. You know, let let us um, make human beings in our image. He, he was really uh, thinking out loud to himself pretty much. And, and trying to put it in human language is difficult to do. Uh, there weren't three separate people that he was talking to because there's just there's just one God. Um, and he manifests himself in different ways as God the Father, God the Word who became the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. But that's, that's a better topic for another video. What we're talking about here is the fact that God decided to create human beings. Now, he created everything else, created the universe and the world, created all of the plants and, and everything, and he created all the animals. And then he said, now, when it comes to man, we're going to do something a little different here. We're, we're going to create people uh, in our image and likeness. And, and so, as I said, it's the idea of resemblance. So that's what he did. He created human beings to resemble himself. What does that mean? How, in what ways do we resemble God? Well, it's, it's not talking about any kind of physical resemblance, obviously. People all look different, right? Uh, no one can claim, I look like God. I resemble God. Look at me. I look like God. Because all people look different. Uh, it, it's not physical. God doesn't have a physical form. Uh, the Bible is very clear about that in the New Testament. In, in 1 John, it says God doesn't have flesh and, blown, flesh, and, excuse me, flesh and bones or flesh and blood. He's not that kind of a, of a being. He's not embodied. Um, he's a spirit being. Okay? Many people kind of envision God as this very old man with long white hair and a big, long, flowing white beard and a big you know, gown of some sort or robe sitting up high on some throne, maybe surrounded by clouds or something and looking down on the earth. And uh, there, that's an artist uh, rendering of, of God, but God certainly doesn't have any kind of 
uh, physical form like that at all. So it, it, we don't resemble God in the sense that our physical bodies are like God in any way because he doesn't have a physical body. Okay, he just he just doesn't. The Bible says he doesn't. So how do we resemble God? God basically is a spirit being or a mind. I, I prefer the word mind, but the word spirit is okay. That, that makes sense to a lot of people. God is a spirit being and a, a, a thinking being. That's what he does. In some of my philosophy texts, I, I describe him as the eternally existing mind. Uh, and we are essentially that same kind of a being. The philosopher Descartes understood this. Uh, in, in fact, he described human beings in that same way and thought that was the kind of being he was. I happen to agree with Descartes. Uh, a lot of philosophers don't, but, but I do. Human beings are thinking beings. Now, we are embodied in a body, right? We live inside this, this physical body. But when the body dies, the part of us that's the real us, right, continues to live. We, we don't cease to exist when the body dies. We continue to live as a, a thinking being, an individuated self with a personal identity that we've had since we began to exist at conception. Okay, so we are essentially the same kind of spirit being or mind being, thinking being that God is. It, it's just that for the time being, right now, uh, we uh, are embodied. Our mind or our spirit lives in this physical body. One day the body will die, but, but the real us uh, will continue to live. And the real us is like God in that sense, that we're a thinking being, just as he's a thinking being. Now, that doesn't mean we're exactly like God, because you know he has always existed, right? There's never a time when God didn't exist. He is uh, eternal. He's infinite. He, he always has existed. We haven't. We began to exist not too long ago. For me, I began to exist 70 years and a few weeks ago because I just turned 70, okay? So I, I, I've been around for 70 years. Uh, it, that's a long time to somebody who's 19 or 20, but for somebody in comparison to somebody who's lived and existed forever, 70 years is nothing. I just, you know, that's a blink of the eye. Um, I'm a new mind uh, compared to God. I like to think about humans in, in terms of being baby minds. We're we just came into existence not too long ago, and we're trying to understand, we're trying to learn, we're exploring, we're trying to figure things out. So we're, we're baby minds while God knows everything that can be known and can do everything that can be done, that sort of thing. So we're fundamentally the same kind of being as God, but we're not identically uh, uh, like God because we, there's too many things we can't do that he can Okay, but the, the bigger question in all of this is why did God want to create people who were the same as he is? And I think the reason is, is because of relationship. Okay, in order for two people to have a meaningful relationship, they have to be essentially the same kind of beings. Okay, now just, just think about that. Um, my wife and I love our dogs. We have two dogs. We have a Rottweiler named Worf and a Grayador, that's a Greyhound Labrador Retriever mix, a Grayador named Emma. Okay, uh, One's black and one's white. And, and they're like our kids. We love them to death. But no matter how much we love our dogs, we understand that you, you can't have the same kind of a relationship with a dog or a cat or a, ho a horse or a hamster or, or any other kind of animal, you, you can't have the same kind of relationship with an animal that you can have with another human being. The, uh, an intimate relationship requires sameness. You, you have to have the same kind of beings so that they can interact in a very uh, intimate way. And this is what God was looking for. He didn't want to create a bunch of pets. He wanted to create people, beings who were like him, 
with whom he could have a relationship. See, that, that's really what he was looking for, a relationship. So he created people in his image for relationship. Now, here's the interesting thing. This happens right in the very beginning of everything. When God was creating everything, he created people in his image. The entire story of the Bible is rooted in this idea of God wanting a relationship with his human children, okay? God desired an intimate relationship that would benefit both his children and himself, something that he could enjoy. And that relationship established, once it began, it was, it was a very meaningful and, and created a great deal of joy for both God and his human children. But if something happens to mess up the relationship, then that's unfortunate, isn't it? And it, and it could be painful. Just about everybody's had some kind of a relationship that uh, has gone wrong in some way and uh, pain has been the result. Maybe the relationship broke up. People break up sometimes because somebody does something that hurts the other person or they're, they're, they're not doing something that the other person would like them to do and, and it, it's not working out. And so people break up. That happens in relationships. Well, is that possible with, with God that the, the relationship between God and his human children could be broken and, and, and then it would have to be repaired? Yeah, that, it could happen. And that's exactly what did happen. And what happened to break the relationship was sin uh, entered into the world. Adam and Eve uh, sinned. They didn't obey God. They didn't do what he asked them not to do. They, in fact, there was only one thing he asked them not to do. Just one thing, right? Just one thing. He said, don't, don't do this. And, said, and then they went and did that, right? And, and it spoiled the relationship. Once the relationship was spoiled, the people who spoiled it, human beings, couldn't do anything to fix it. They couldn't repair it. And God knew this was going to happen because God's God. He knows everything before it happens. So he knew this was going to happen, and he had a plan. And his plan was that... Eventually, at some point in the future, he would become a human being and he would offer himself as a sacrifice of atonement so that sin could be forgiven, so that people and God could be reconciled, could be brought back into a good, healthy relationship where they could live in this relationship as God originally intended. That's basically the story of scripture, right? The relationship uh, created, the relationship broken, good relationship recreated by God taking the actions necessary in order to reconcile people to himself. Now, it doesn't just happen automatically. Just like in any relationship, you know, there's, there's people on both sides of the thing and, and there has to be some mutual interest and mutual agreement. Uh, God is making the offer. God has done everything that needs to be done so that people can be reconciled to him and enjoy a relationship with him. But people have to want that and they have to, uh, in essence, apologize for their sins. In the Bible, it's called repentance. It's, it's an acknowledgement that, yeah, I, I messed up, didn't I? I did something wrong, and I'm sorry. Uh, please, can we get back together? You see, that's, that's the idea in Scripture. You, you acknowledge your sin, and, and you come back to God in humility and faith, wanting to reestablish the relationship. And that's, that's a very important idea. Um, and so this, this whole Bible story grows out of the idea of God wanting a relationship with his children. God doing what he needed to do to reestablish a broken relationship so that he and we can enjoy a mutually satisfying relationship. Well, that's, a, that's a great story. That's a wonderful story. And when people understand that's really what Christianity is about, that's really what religion is about, it's not about a bunch of rules, don't do this and don't do that, and you're going to go to hell if you do that. 
You know, that, that's the wrong way to present the concept of God's love and God's grace and God's mercy. God's looking for a relationship with his children. He loves the children he created. He wants to spend time with us. He wants to help us. He wants us to love him and to know him and, and to let him help us be the very best people we can be. See, that's that's what Christianity is is really about. It's a wonderful blessing. And, and people who are very critical of Christianity are so, I think, because they, they really don't get it. They really don't understand what the message of Christianity is and what God wants and what God's trying to do. Well, I, I hope this little explanation was uh, helpful to you, maybe even interesting. I don't know. Uh, but I hope you uh, will continue to think about God and a relationship with God and, and spend some time reading his word. Be, be awfully good if you could just find some time to read the New Testament maybe the Gospel of John or the Gospel of Mark, and, and start learning more about Jesus. Because when God became a human being, he did so in the person of Jesus to show us how to live and to offer himself as a sacrifice of atonement. That's what he came to do. And it, it, it makes all the difference for us. Well, Again, I want to ask you if you enjoyed this video, if you would consider subscribing, it would really help us out a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll watch some more. God bless.